Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. Increased support is being given to the nation's young entrepreneurs. The National Conservation Authority makes headway in tackling the sargassum seaweed. St. Lucia's nurses are recognized for their dedication. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Aquion. Increased support is being given to the nation's young entrepreneurs. Minister for Commerce, Industry, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs, Honorable Bradley Felix, says government is ensuring that assistance during all phases of a startup is afforded. This, he noted, would have significant impact on the already declining youth unemployment rate. More from Janelle Novell. The Ministry of Commerce, Industry, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs, and by extension the Government of St. Lucia, has pledged its commitment to set the foundation for youth entrepreneurship. According to Minister for Commerce, Industry, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs, Honorable Bradley Felix, one of the biggest challenges for the youth seeking to start their own businesses is financing. The challenge, he said, has become even more apparent given global trends. My ministry standpoint, we continue to to look at ways to to assist entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, small entrepreneurs, our startups. We are looking at areas to to, to be able to get grant funding for them because we know that's where the challenges lie. I mean, the whole world now is under under the the the, the, the well, I should say we more or less um, keeping very close a very close eye on what's happening with the trade war between China and um, the USA because there could be some um, repercussions to us down the line in, in small island developing states. The minister also highlighted that there are several advantages to boosting youth entrepreneurship. One such benefit is the potential reduction in St. Lucia's unemployment rate. Overall, youth unemployment decreased from 38.5% in 2017 to 36.3% in 2018. From a country's perspective, my ministry is looking to ensure that we can build up our young business people because we truly believe that the way we can grow the country is to have more private business men and women involved in their own, in their own, um, own affairs to um, take off the load from government as it relates to employment. So as long as we continue to help these areas, we believe um, we will see um, re re good results. The minister reiterated his confidence that the government's plans will yield positive results, not only for the youth, but for the country as a whole. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. Meantime, Export St. Lucia is continuing to assist in the penetration of markets. Young entrepreneur and owner of Mangal Trading, Nyla Mangal, has received assistance from Export St. Lucia with exporting fresh produce. Here's a look at her experience. My name is Naila Mangal and I'm the owner of Mangal's Trading. At Mangal Trading, we sort out fresh local produce to export it to international and regional countries. As a young person growing up in the agriculture field, there are many challenges that people face, especially with agriculture. There are, well, farmers normally plant so many local produce and they have no markets for them now with the help of export st lucia you we go to farmers we purchase the produce and we have that market to send it overseas so in a way that helps majority of farmers every shipment we normally work with about 50 60 farmers because you get to purchase sour soap from that one purchase cucumber purchase planting different produce different farmers you'll never go to one farmer and get all the produce export and Lucia helped me to export in the UK and now we're working in trying to get a market in Antigua as well as America the relationship I have built built with them is that they help me get the market one secondly my business yeah, there's a, I should say, a, a more profitable compared to before. The National Conservation Authority, NCA, is reporting success with its efforts at tackling the sargassum seaweed along the island's east coast. 
The undertaking is also providing employment opportunities for residents in communities affected by the seaweed influx. More from Chevroy Marius. The National Conservation Authority, NCA, has embarked upon an initiative to remove the troublesome sagasum seaweed from St. Lucia's coastlines. The exercise involved the handling and recycling of the seaweed from the densely covered seashores. To accomplish this mammoth task, the NCA, in collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture and the Office of the Prime Minister, hosted a two-day training workshop at Viewfort, Denry and Prale from May 31st to June 3rd, 2019. Manager of the National Conservation Authority, Ms. Jacinta Lee, emphasized the need to keep our beaches clean. There's, there's the need to, to, clean, to clean the beaches. And as you know, and many, many people know, when you drive around you know, by Prale and by Denry, there is that stench. You know, and it's been there for a long time. This is a, a, a Sagasam project. And the first part of it is the training and the second part is the implementation. And there are a number of agencies and entities involved. And one is the National Apprenticeship Program, NAP. There's also the Office of the Prime Minister, the Ministry of, of Agriculture. The program employs individuals from the various communities who are then trained in the handling and disposal of the cigars and seaweed. You are going to get paid to clean up your own community. And, um, and those persons who have the interest in using the sargasm for other uses, as Mr. Phil just explained, are also going to benefit. All right? And so in the course of the meeting, we'll discuss what is involved in employment for you, the things that you're going to expect, what we ourselves as the project leaders are expecting from you as well. Reported from the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, I am Chevrolet Marius. The Ambassador of Diaspora Affairs, Her Excellency Dr. Joycelyn Clark Fletcher, will be travelling to the UK to meet with Diaspora in London, Birmingham and Manchester. The visits are due to commence from the 19th of June 2019. In attendance will be Prime Minister the Honourable Alan Chastney and His Excellency Guy Mayers, St. Lucia's High Commissioner to the UK. The meeting will discuss the diaspora policy, listen to diaspora concerns and the way forward. Still in diaspora affairs, the St. Lucia Toronto Association Action Group STAG will be celebrating its seventh anniversary this month. The group advocates early awareness and detection of breast and prostate cancer. The group seeks supplies and consumables in Canada and ships them to the St. Jude's and Soufre hospitals, as well as various polyclinics in St. Lucia. STAG has also partnered with Sick Kids Hospitals to forge avenues to assist St. Lucia. The skills and hard work of nurses around the island was recognized as, Saint Lu as the St. Lucia Nurses Association recently celebrated Nurses Week with a number of activities. More from Fennel Neptune. The St. Lucia Nurses Association recently celebrated Nurses Week with an educational conference at the Finance Administrative Building. In St. Lucia, Nurses Week was celebrated under the theme, Safe Staffing Saves Lives. President of the St. Lucia Nurses Association, Alicia Baptist, spoke on the importance of safe staffing as to ensure the delivery of quality patient care. Nurses have an integral role in the healthcare system. State-mandated safe staffing ratios are necessary to ensure the safety of patients and nurses. Adequate nurse staffing is key to patient care and nurse retention, while inadequate staffing endangers patients and drives nurses from their profession. Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac, commended the nurses for their dedication and hard work towards their career and patients. Even if you have the aptitude to do the sciences, it does not translate into safe nursing. It does not translate even into nursing. Nursing may not necessarily be the thing for you because the profession is an extremely important profession. You are taking care of people's lives. And that is what makes it so important. Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac also appealed to the nurses to continue providing the great service to St. Lucians. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, 
I am Final Neptune. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. I was in my neighborhood. It was a very dark night and I decided to go for a drink by a bar. On my way from the bar, I felt the sting to my right leg. And when I looked back, I knew it was a, a, a full of snake. You happen to be in an area where there are snakes and you are bitten by a snake. This is what you do. You call for help and try to reach the Victoria Hospital within one or three hours. You will be seen immediately. My uncle at the time was a police officer, called the um, Victoria Hospital and told them that we come in down for snake bite. It's the only facility on the island which has a protocol and a treatment plan where you can be treated adequately. We call them before you go there so they can prepare for you. And rest assured that there are adequate supplies of antivenom with doctors who have been trained in the treatment protocols of the snake bite. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Welcome to your weekend update on youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. More on the upcoming inter-primary and secondary school swim championships said to be held at the Rodney Heights Aquatic Center June 21st. The swimmers will swim in age groups as per FINA rules. Age as of December 31st, 2018 will determine the age group in which swimmers participate. June 12th is the deadline for registration. Each school will enter no more than four swimmers per age group and sex in individual events. However, only two swimmers per team will be allowed to score. Each school may enter up to two relay teams in the relay event. There shall be neither substitutes nor alternatives in individual events. Swimmers may enter a maximum of three events. Medals will be awarded for the first three places per event. Trophies for age group winners and the overall meet winner will be awarded at the annual school sports award ceremony put on by the Ministry of Youth Development and Sport. The relays will not count towards points and are fun events only. Scoring will be first place, nine points, second place, seven points, third place, six points, fourth place, five points, fifth place, four points, sixth place, three points, seventh place, two points, eighth place, one point. The St. Lucia Aquatics Federation will provide a meet referee, keep timer, and stroke and turn official. All events are time finals and seeded according to entry times or no time if none is available. The pool will be open one hour before the meet or warm up. Lane assignments will be given upon arrival at the pool. Swimmers must wear uniforms in the March pass of the opening ceremony. Semi-final action in the school's under-15 40 overs competition played Friday. Leon Hess assured themselves a place in the final of their competition, defeating Sufre Comprehensive by eight wickets at the Wen Plain Field. Sufre Comprehensive batting first were bowled out for 73 in 21.1 overs, with Kevin Gassi hitting 33 and Caleb Jones 10. Lee John had outstanding figures of 5 for 26 and Captain Seanan Edward, 3 for 14. In reply, Leon Hess achieved their target, finishing on 74 for 2 in 13.1 overs. Khan Elcock struck 30, and Lee John was 16 undefeated. Kevin Gassi picked up both wickets to fall for 25 runs. And as of news time, at the Grosile playing field, St. Mary's College, batting first against Trizal Secondary, got to 282 for 6, of the allotted overs in their semi-final engagement. The final is set to be played on Wednesday, June 12th. That's your update this week from Youth Development and Sports. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The OECS Commission has signed an agreement with Facebook Caribbean that will allow access to Facebook's disaster maps in an effort to improve emergency response for OECS member states during times of disaster. 
Facebook's disaster maps are dynamic mapping resources with information about where populations are located, how they are moving, and where they are checking in safe during a natural disaster. Using this de-identified and aggregated information, relief agencies will be able to more efficiently respond to the needs of affected communities with appropriate services and supplies. The OBCS Commission is one such user seeking to use the technology to improve its disaster management strategy. Dr. Didikos Jules is the Director General of the OBCS Commission. Facebook is one of the most ubiquitous social media platforms globally. Um, there are almost a trillion people, I believe, on Facebook right now. And so it is in the Caribbean, it is also one of the most widely used social media. The agreement that we have signed with Facebook gives us um, a working partnership with them that would help us in terms of tremendously boosting our social media out outreach. It would also give us access to some of the analytics and data that uh, are available through their platform. For example, with Signature today, we immediately have access to disaster maps for the OECS member states. Um, this is going to be shared with the, the national disaster agencies in all of the OECS member states and will be an invaluable tool in any disaster response that needs to take place in the event of a hurricane. Facebook's public policy manager for the Caribbean, Claudia Giraldo, says the disaster maps are aimed at providing disaster relief institutions and organizations with information that is critical to dealing with disasters efficiently. This will provide the OECS visibility as to um, the information that our users share with us uh, voluntarily and like to share with other people with relation to their location and their location history. It tells um, these organizations where communities are and where they're moving to in moments of a disaster and it tells as well if they have access for example to electricity or to internet networks. This enables institutions to be able to provide services and support to communities live when they need it in moments where time counts. The agreement was signed on June 4, 2019. In other OECS-related news, the Global Green Growth Initiative, the GGGI, opened a new office in Castries to strengthen support for its work to further promote green growth in the Caribbean region and expand its partnership with the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the OECS. The DGGI and OECS joint program will accelerate the flow of climate finance to support energy sector resilience in OECS countries as well as support expansion and achievement of their nationally determined contributions NDC goals under the Paris Agreement. The GGGI also plans to work with individual OECS countries to facilitate country-level implementation of OECS policy recommendations, especially in the areas of energy, sustainability and climate adaptation. The new GGGI office is located at the OECS headquarters at Mount Fortune. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arquion. Point pour caution, et fait tout ça au ni pour faire pour sauver de l'eau. Laver bagay sal à dans un bassin de l'eau, pas quitter de l'eau à couille. Aussi, pas quitter de l'eau à couille, l'air ou cachou et pan. Si toilet bol ou ka kole, ou ni pour mettre ten en dit de bac la. Toilet bol la, ka kole, si ou ka wè kole à de bol la avant ou flush li. Un toilet bol ki ka kole, ka gaspille un chai glo. Servi un bon pito en rose pour laver motoka. Le ou ka lave had, servi de l'eau ou se a pour ouze fle ou. Le ou sauve de l'eau, ou ka bese manye a, ou ka servi tepe ou aman. Sauve de l'eau tout le ou ni en chance, ek chorje tout de l'eau ek pontan. Ça, c'est en commission Rodwasco. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arquion. Monsieur, Madame, département qui n'est responsabilité pour information, un gouvernement, celui-ci, GIS, à ce même télévision nationale, NTN, Caposoto, Nouvelle Arquion. Posoto, Primus Hutchinson. Go projet pour bâtir l'aéroport international Hiwanora en neuf en vieux fort, qui a coûté 175 millions de dollars américains, j'ai commencé. Le projet aéroport neuf, ça là, 
car il y a une facilité qui est sept fois plus grande pour les avions garés. Aussi bien, établissement tout neuf pour contrôler le trafic avion qui a tué et qui a payé. L'aéroport international neuf là, car il y a deux états en grandeur de 337 pieds carrés et placement pour l'auto garé qui a eu une grande quantité de l'argent. L'aéroport a aussi un système chimé à un haut degré. Go Greg Slasford, Darren Stack, tu es plein et puis commencement un projet et quand c'est un autre neuf pour Slasford qui paye cette ici et paye cette ici qui a existé, qui a excité autant. Ce n'est pas remarqué qui est ni passé dix ans projet ça là à ce plan et qu'à présent il parle pour prendre la vol. Les autorités qui vont se pour contrôler le développement en pays a j'ai autorisation pour travailler commencer pour préparer le placement et que le pays qui préparation le placement qui est fini en trois mois. Snack a vrai aussi qui projet pour le développement et le projet international. C'est une de ces plus gros tas qui se lasse par le gouvernement cette ci J'ai abrassé. Comme la terre qui a observé vendredi qu'on y a l'autre l'année à ce reportage sur manger, Ministre des Affaires Agricultures, cette ci Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, qui a fait un appel pour la plus attention à ce bonne qualité manger à cette ci Il y a une grande conférence l'année passée. L'Organisation des Affaires Nations Unies a une décision pour la terre observer le jour de manger le 7 juin tous les années, selon le ministre Joseph. Magoué est très important pour comprendre la significance de la productivité en économie agricole, mais aussi bien. Il est très important pour comprendre la qualité de manger qui nous a servi. Parce qu'il n'y a pas fait de pièce science pour nous concentrer sur la production et nous ne pouvons pas faire de qualité de manger qui est bon pour santé. Comme ministre, nous avons pris une initiative pour nous assurer que nous manger nous mettre à la place là. C'est bon qualité. Bon manger qui a produit en cette ici et puis manger qui a entré un pays cette ici. Pour, pour ça, le gouvernement est nécessaire pour établir le diagnostic facilité en ligne. En facilité, ça, les conseils qui ont pouvoir assister les ministres agricoles et puis tous ces gens qui ont engagé et puis ont fait manger pour nous faire ces nécessaires tests pour assurer que manger qui est là, sur la place, là, chemical, les paniers chai chimiques là le ministre agricole a déclaré que la division qui est comme ça pour la recherche en affaires agricoles au ministère de l'Agriculture, j'ai un travail pour encourager les cultivateurs et les pharma pour servir plus ou moins chimique pour traiter dans le pays. Parce que nous avons produit manger en cette ici et puis nous avons servi plus les chimiques. So, moi, je voulais dire que tous les extension departements et tous ces départements là en, en ministère de l'Agriculture, en, 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 en ministère de l'Agriculture aussi, merci et puis New Marketing Entity, nous tous qui travaillons ensemble pour assurer que le manger à nous produit ni qualité et bon assez pour le monde consommer. Et puis nous croyons que si nous tous mettons tête nous ensemble, nous allons accomplir ça. United Nations là, a mis un objectif food safety, everybody's business. Ce projet que le gouvernement Taïwan a financé à cette ci j'ai trouvé une bonne félicitation par le ministre des Affaires et des étrangères de Taïwan, Dr. Joseph Yu. Dr. Yu a visité cette ci la semaine passée pour essayer de marcher Taïwan pour un projet pour improuver le chemin en Saltibus qui a coûté 42 millions de dollars américains. Il a aussi visité le projet que le gouvernement Taïwan a financé à choisir et à souffrir. A parmi ces projets souffrir, c'est Hummingbird Beach Park. Le ministre qui a une responsabilité pour faire les étrangers dans cette ici. On a aussi le Flood Bobre déclaré que ce projet a montré des grandes relations cette ici et puis la République des pays Chine-Taïwan. Le ministre a dit qu'il bâtit à son développement les peuples. Le premier ministre, on a Alain Chasney, aussi bien le ministre des Affaires, Développement économique, Transportation, ça c'est on a Guy Joseph, qui est parmi les autres qui était présent devant la visitation. Ça là. Et que vous avez écouté nous avons une nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder et vous avez une invitation. Je vous remercie moi encore. Si vous conservez la vie, vous avez présenté une autre nouvelle à Kouyol. Je vous remercie. Bonne fin de semaine et 
Donc, à vie et présente au Michel. Merci au Pale Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. A weak tropical wave just east of the Lesser Antilles is moving westward near 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour. It is expected to cause some showery periods in the vicinity of Trinidad and Tobago from tonight into Saturday. A second tropical wave over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 23 miles per hour or 37 kilometers per hour. This wave is expected to affect the southern eastern Caribbean islands late Sunday into Monday. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. The tide for Castries Harbour was low at 1.06 p.m. and will be high again at 7.57 p.m. The tide for VA4 Bay was low at 2.33 p.m. and will be high again at 9.04 p.m. The seas are moderate to locally rough with waves 4 to 7 feet or 1.2 to 2.1 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to above normal seas. The sun will rise Saturday at 5.35 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.